Hey everyone, in this series we're going to look at how to make an updated version of the Arcade Classic Qbert. The main difference is that the original Qbert was in a 2D environment that was trying to emulate a rudimentary 3D environment. In this, we're going to just use a 3D environment, and the irony is that the 3D environment is actually easier to use than trying to fake a 3D environment in a 2D environment. So let's get into it. So the one thing I've done so far is I just created this model in 3D Builder. You can use whatever 3D modeling application you want. There's nothing special about it. It's just kind of an oval, the nose, couple legs. I did have to shrink the scale factor because for some reason making models in 3D Builder, they come out huge. But otherwise you can you know, work with that when you make your models. So Right now, we're going to start with just the tiles that Qbert lands on. So we're not going to make a full block because it's really not necessary. The only thing that really matters is the tile that he's landing on. Now, the pyramid shape that he's on is actually much simpler to make than what it may look like because traveling down along the left and the right side, those two sides are actually, those paths are actually perpendicular. What makes them look like they're an odd angle is because of the positioning of the camera. So... It makes it super easy to make the board. So I'm just going to rotate this around the director's camera. I haven't actually moved the player camera yet. So game object, 3D object, plane, it's too big. And the math, while it's simple, is very important. So 0.1x, 0.1y. Why? Because that makes it exactly one unity unit. So what's a unity unit? Well, positions here, we'll put this at all zeros. The difference between zero and one is one unity unit. So that lines these up absolutely perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're going to have one path come out this way along the z-axis and one travel this way along the x-axis. So each tile will be successively one unit further forward and one unit down. And this will be one successively one unit down and one unit along the x-axis. So let's see how that looks. So we're going to copy, we're going to paste. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this, as I said, along the z-axis, exactly one, so negative one and down exactly one, negative one. Likewise, this one traveling this way, let's copy and paste this, will instead be one along the x-axis, stay zero on the z-axis, and then I already had set the negative one for here. So already it's starting to look like the top of the board. And if I take our director camera and do that, it really does look like the, uh, the top of the cube board. Before I go any further, yes, I absolutely could use the instantiate command. I could use a for loop and an instantiate command and do this with like three or four lines of code. But because the positioning is so important, I find that it, I'd rather demonstrate this visually than go through the instantiate code. Not to mention that you only ever make one board. So it's not like you're doing this times 100 or 200. It's whatever, 20 some odd tiles and you're done. So yes, you couldn't use instantiate, but I think in this particular case, because the layout was so important, I think I'd rather do it visually. Okay, so we'll copy this one and we're going to continue along the x-axis here. So again, it's just one more and one more. Likewise, this way, it's one more and one more. Now you can just do go down, you can go along one side if you want. You don't have to keep jumping back and forth. So whatever makes more sense to you. So we can keep going in this direction. So negative three, negative three, negative four, negative four. Again, you're trying to keep a consistent slope to this line. Negative five, negative five. So that gives us six 
and Qbert's board is seven. And so there's the seventh one. And then just rinse and repeat on this side. Oops, let's try that one. So since this one was 2-2, two, two, it's just 3-3. Three, three. And let's try that again with the numbers I actually said, Mike. 3-3. Three, three. And again, I'm saying the absolute value. Some of these are negatives. So the y is negative. So 4, 4, Five, five, six, six. So there's the border. We still have the middle ones to fill in too, but we can always do that later. Now I really want to focus on the control, but now you've got the idea of how to make the board, how to make the layout. So let's take Hubert and put him into the scene. Looks like he might need to be shrunk a little bit. So let's yeah, let's shrink them a tiny bit. Again, I think I mentioned already that this is kind of um, that I had to really shrink it because for some reason 3D Builder makes them huge. So let's rotate him up and then rotate him around. So it should give us a negative 90, 90, and a 180. Depending on what you use, you might not have to rotate yours at all. And we'll put them centered-ish. Kind of hard to center him exactly, though, because of his nose. So that's something we will have to take in consideration. The good news is that... Unity doesn't detect collisions based on the object itself, but the collider box, which is unseen. So you can always make your game a little bit more forgiving by having the collision area not exactly match the uh, 3D model. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and add a collider. We might have to tweak it later in, in case it's like bumping the ledges, but... We can cross that bridge when we find it. So, Qbert needs two objects. Uh, excuse me, two components. My apologies. Qbert needs two components. So, add component, physics. There's the box collider. Obviously, positioned wrong in the wrong size. So, let's shrink this like 0.5. Actually, I was doing a test run earlier, and I was getting some unexpected... Um, he was hitching along certain tiles. So let's do 0 0.3, 0 0.3. The idea is so he's not just landing on these tiny little legs, that that gives us more space to land on. And let's make this, uh, let's raise this up like 0.2. Okay, so his legs actually extend beyond that a little bit so let's make this like one point a uh, uh, rather point like one eight that's fine and again when we actually have him jumping around if there's an issue with uh him clipping against if he's hitting the board we can always make this maybe a little bit more narrow like the x could maybe be like say point two five that kind of thing all right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make, we're going to add one more component. So the box collider, again, is for collisions. And then the next physics component will be rigid body, and that allows for gravity and velocity. And those two things I just mentioned are going to do the bulk of the movement. So right-click, Create, C-sharp. And we'll call this move Q. We'll take Qbert. We'll add move Q. And then we'll open move Q. 
Okay. The update section runs once per frame. Or another way to say it runs every frame. So what we're going to do is we want to look for input. So if, oops, sorry, my apologies. That should not have been an asterisk. That should have been a parenthesis. My apologies. If parenthesis input dot get key down. The reason why you do get key down is that this will be true for only the first frame that the key is down. So in other words, you want to do this as a non rapid fire. You would use just get key if you want a rapid fire that every single frame it's true. Get key down is only the first frame that the key is down. And we're just going to use, uh, let's use the A key, it doesn't matter. You can use whatever input you want. We can look at some alternates later on. At the beginning, when you first make a game, it's just prototype and it's just proof of concept. You can always go back and fix things. Like, for instance, as of this recording, um, a couple weeks ago, Control by Remedy was released. There were some performance issues. This week, an update just got released to improve those performance issues. That's just the way game design works, is you continue to iterate. So you may want a different control scheme. That's great, but I, I don't want to bring the project to a grinding halt trying to look at all the different control schemes. So for now, we'll just use this one because it's easy. It's easily provable. In other words, if I'm using the analog stick, it's like, okay, did I really press down? Did I press down left? Here, it looks for an exact key. So if input dot get key down a key, then get component. What component? The rigid body that we just added. So if the rigid body component, uh, not if, excuse me, uh, if the A key is pressed, we're going to modify the rigid body velocity, and it's going to be new vector 3, which means X, Y, and Z in this case. So uh, for this one, this will be moving along Z, so X won't move at all. We'll have jump four in the air of a velocity of positive four and we'll have a negative one velocity it's moving out towards the camera now i could copy and paste this but i just want to demonstrate this working okay now obviously i need to move the camera for the uh, player but if I press A, see, you can see he's in the center. So we know that works. So because I'm lazy, but also to reinforce the idea that once you've done this, you're just going to rinse and repeat. We're going to add the W key. And this is going to reverse this. Since he's jumping up, needs to jump higher. So we'll make that six. And we'll make this a positive one because rather than moving towards the camera, moving away. So let's save that. And we will move the camera now. We're going to have it match the, uh, not exactly match, but put it close to the um, same perspective of the director's camera, whatever Unity calls it. Let's rotate this some more. Rotate this down. It looks like I might have positioned it a little bit too far over. And nothing really, um, no rocket science to this part. This is just trying to make it look right, trying to center the board. You know, zoom it in, zoom it out. Nothing really scientific about uh, this particular part of the process. And you can certainly tweak it if, you, if there's something about it you don't like. Thinking it needs to move this way a little bit more. Yeah, that's what's wrong. Then we could rotate it that way and then rotate it that way. And it still doesn't quite center, but I seem to keep going back and forth. So I don't want to waste your time. So as soon as it looks close enough, I think that's good. 
Yep, not perfect, but um, he's not quite centered, so the the pyramid isn't quite centered, but you get the idea. You just kind of have to play around till you get it right. So we said that A moves down. Now there's nothing in place that would keep you from hitting A repeatedly. So right now that would absolutely break movement. So we will eventually put a control into place that makes sure that you can't repeatedly hit A, that you that A will only respond once you've come to a halt. And then we said W is up. Obviously, it doesn't rotate. That doesn't happen automatically. You have to put in a command to rotate. We'll probably do that next video since I'm just handling the motion in this one. And now just rinse and repeat for this direction. So we'll use the D key for traveling down along the X. Now, because we were going positive in the X direction, it's not negative one, it's positive one, at least for moving down, but then moving back, it'll be negative one. And this will be the E key. Now, when I was testing this earlier, for some reason, when he was moving up this way he would clip and and get knocked over so if we have to mess with the collider box I might do that between videos we'll see if it works all right so D D and then E nope just fine Not sure it's my imagination, but it looks like he wobbles a little bit. So depending on the aesthetic you're going, going for, you might not like that. There's a few things we can do to make him not wobble. But again, this was just the start. This was just getting the basic motion in place. So we've already built a good chunk of the board. We already got him doing his basic movement. Yeah, he is kind of wobbling a little bit. The base probably needs to be a little bit wider. Anyways, so... That should do it for this video. So we've gotten the basic movement into place. We have a good chunk of the board in place. In the next video, we'll finish the board. We will have him rotate, depending on which direction he's traveling in. We'll see what we need to do about the wobble. But again, it's not interfering with the game, so that's more of the debugging and optimization. I'll probably save all that to the end as far as, like I said, how we need to put in a control so you don't rapid. If someone rapidly hits the jump button, it doesn't break it. Um, so those kind of things will all be put in at the end. So the next video, though, will be he'll rotate. We finish the board. When he jumps on a block, the color will change. And uh, checking to see when all blocks, all tiles have been clicked on. So the next video will get us probably like halfway done already and then the video after that we'll look at adding monsters because there's like little blobs that chase them in like a snake that kind of thing and i don't have any great ai solution for this but we'll probably just do some random pathing and i think that's about it for this video then so that's what to look forward to for the next video i really hope that you found this helpful if there's any special feature you want, please leave a comment so I know. But like I said, I've already uh, kind of mapped out what I want to do for the next few episodes, the next few videos. Oh, and adding a sound file so when he lands, it does like a little bleep, that kind of thing. And, you know, live system, you know, the, the, the general arcade stuff. So looking at maybe four or five video totals. So hope this has been helpful and have a good day.